Hello, I'm Timothy Linsdale, video producer, a Christian, and a lover of history. Today I want to talk about George Washington, the undeniable father of America. So what is it about George Washington that makes him an exceptional historical figure? The undeniable father of America. I want to talk about that. And uh, some history, born in uh, around 1732, February 22nd, so a couple of days from today is his actual birthday. Uh, some say we shouldn't be celebrating a, an innocuous President's Day, but we should be celebrating his birthday as this exceptional political military leader. He's one of the founding fathers. He served the president two terms, the first president, uh, served as the leading commander of the revolutionary forces that defeated the greatest power in the world at the time in the American Revolution, which is really a pretty extraordinary thing to do. Uh, he has some interesting history behind him, many legends about such as uh, chopping down the cherry tree and not lying about it. There's really no evidence that he chopped down a cherry tree. Um, he became well-educated, especially in mathematics. Uh, became a surveyor by profession. Uh, inherited Mount Vernon from his family. Uh, really, he said all he ever wanted to really be is a farmer. And uh, that's, that's what he did when he wasn't called to action. Uh, as a military man, he, he ironically started out as a British officer in the French and, um, French and Indian War that uh, the British uh, fought with uh, the French and Indian allies. And he was an officer in that war and uh, was in a big battle and was shot at many times by the Indians and did not hit him. And the interesting thing in the story is when he took off his hat after the battle, there were uh, lead shavings in his hair. And years later, he met one of the uh, Indian chiefs that was involved in that battle and wanted to know this wanted to meet this incredible person that was bulletproof by the number of braves that had shot at him. Uh, there are other stories like that where he was riding alone and a uh, British sniper saw him but didn't know who he was, wasn't sure, and actually let him pass and later on discovered it was Washington. So there are numerous stories like that about Washington. Uh, divine intervention, if you will, uh, an incredible leader. His stature was extraordinary for the time. He was six foot three, taller than most people, uh, which added to his uh, physical uh, prowess, I'm sure. He uh, led in when he was in battles, his uh, uh, officers would have to hold him back from outpacing his army in, in an attack and putting himself in extreme danger. In fact, there were times when his uh, coat had bullet holes in it. Uh, he had horses shot out from under him. <laughs> Pretty crazy stuff. Right up front, uh, many would argue that he was an, a flawed person like all of us. He had slaves. He traded the slaves. He uh, later became troubled by the institution, freed them in his will. I believe it was him that said at the signing of the Constitution that slavery was the rattlesnake under the table the Constitution was signed on. And that would prove true, uh, not only for the Civil War, but all of the uh, discrimination that took place after that and how many years it take to, to deal with that issue. Left a stain on our country for sure. So served in many ways, uh, married to Martha Washington. He died relatively long in his, young in his mid-60s. And uh, uh, now he lives in, in legend. Uh, there's an interesting um, comment from George III, who was the king at the time of the Revolution. And uh, one thing he said about the loss of America was paradise lost. But he was having a conversation with a portrait, uh, portraiture about what he thought Washington would do after the war was over. And uh, the portraiture said he'd probably just go back to his farm. 
and uh, he liked being a farmer. And the, uh, the King, King George said, that's incredible. He said, if, when he wins this, or if he wins this, I'm not sure which point it was, uh, and he goes back to his farm, George said, he will be the greatest man in the world because it was an incredible thing that he did to defeat a superior power and not take over as a ruler or a king, but to walk away. And again, he was called uh, into service to be the first president. Uh, of course, before that, he sat as the presiding president of the constitutional meeting to create the Constitution. And uh, what an imposing person to put there, so it was an only fit. And uh, he was dealing with minds like uh, Jefferson and Adams and Hamilton and uh, uh, Ben Franklin. Uh, all those great minds coming together were pretty amazing. And he had uh, trouble in politics, like so many pol politicians do. Jefferson, Adams, uh, Hamilton were divided on how the way the government should be. And uh, many times violently, as in Hamilton and uh, uh, dying in a duel. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think politics is harsh now. Take that one on for size. One of the things, uh, after leaving the military, George Washington set out to become a farmer on his, on his beloved Mount Vernon, which is ter a terrific place to visit, from what I understand. All fully uh, uh, refurbed, spruced up, and kept in good condition. It was abandoned for some time uh, before it was taken under the uh, certain citizens, put it back together, uh, making a good point of that. But he was involved in making points about Thanksgiving. He wrote a Thanksgiving uh, Day proclamation. Uh, should instill in citizens gratitude to our nation and our creator. This was a, a part of the forefathers that's pretty hard to separate between God and country. Uh, when you see the extraordinary things that happen, I think it's hard to deny the divine here. You may but uh, it was pretty incredible. And he said, Thanksgiving, therefore, is a holiday that restrains democratic self-satisfaction and pride. In other words, to be thankful, to be humble. But he also talked about the 4th of July <clears throat> because the 4th of July celebrates courage and manliness, the kind required to defeat a great empire. And, and uh, to found a community devoted to political liberty. That's what it's all about, is individual liberty. That's one of the problems with the collective socialist communist thinking. It doesn't recognize individual liberty. It doesn't recognize the natural law that those are rights you've been given by God outside of man, which is very important. And there are endless nations and empires on the trash heap of history that have tried to do that, to try to do the collective uh, type of government without allowing everyone freedom and liberty. So he was able to do these contrasting spirits, that of subordination and that of assertion, both healthy aspects of a Republican character. Now what do we mean by a Republican character? Remember this is a representative democratic republic. That's what the U.S. is. We, repre we, we elect representatives to represent us in all of our government organizations down to uh, uh, school boards, uh, city councils, uh, governors, state legislators, and of course the Congress and the executive branch uh, are all elected by the people. As Lincoln said, by of and for the people. We gotta include Lincoln's name for President's Weekend, of course. We'll get the link in a little later. Um, so uh, <clears throat> Washington's a pretty extraordinary character. And he was actually called back to be um, the commander of all American armies, all American. Today, I guess you call it the Defense Department, but he was... Um, he asked not he was asked to do that and I but what happened is he died before that was 
uh, you know, before that happened. But later on, sometime later, he was actually given that, that recognition uh, by the United States government as the commander of all American armies, which I think is kind of extraordinary. <laughs> um, what, what that all involves, I don't know, but uh, it's pretty fascinating. He was an amazing person, goes down in history. George III said he's the greatest man in history. Uh, um, greatest man in the world is what he said, but it, I think it makes him the greatest man in history. It was hard for people to understand at the time that anybody could do what he did. But he did it and served valiantly. So he has become George Washington, the undeniable father of America. I'm Tim D. Linsdow. Like and comment on my video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.